Here's a little warning. I might be opinionated today. And we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about how woo, to woo. get it's the warning and maintain siren. flexibility, mobility, range of motion, however you want to talk about it. Call it. We've had a good question coming in. So some a guest uh, or one of our audience members got in touch with us with a great question. And we thought, you know what? Rather than just have a little email correspondence back and forth, we'd share that question and get some opinions on the subject of staying mobile. And Jacko is actually the, the, was the reason and the prompt behind his now a very impressive range of motion, mobility, flexibility skills. It, maybe that's the same thing. I don't know. But he was the he was the reason for the question, Jacko, because you can well, now touch your toes. Well, done. <laughs> yeah. no, I was going to say the the mobility, flexibility, range of motion. Insert insert your. Well, I was going to say, insert any word, but effectively, what we're talking about is everyone's favorite current, currently everyone's favorite word that's listening to the podcast. Bendy or Being half, of bendy. The, half, of, half of half of how bendy he is. <laughs> well, bendy. Oh, I've never been able to be that bendy before. I'd like to be your bendy as well. Um, there is one way you can get more bendy though, Jacko. Let's just we're not going to butcher the podcast now, but if you want to get more bendy, tell them how they can get more bendy. <laughs> well, not bendy and, and all of those things of the uh, the mobility, <laughs> the flexibility, the range of motion, the bendy, the like just in just the that you know that noise that people make when you're like, ooh. Like, oh, that just feels nicer when I do that, when I'm moving like that. That would yes. be anyone that is uh, joined uh, our six week mobility online course that myself and the legend Georgie, who is she is the definition of bendy. Um, she is well bendy. <laughs> and um, a number of times we've got the next series of this is coming up. Um, there's obviously a limited time. It starts on the 22nd of February, six weeks um, at the same time. Every week you get to join those live sessions, get coached by me and Georgie during those sessions. There's tutorials of all the uh, exercises we do and more uh, that you get to keep uh, lifetime access to that library of exercises or exercise tutorials. And you can watch those sessions back that we do um, on replay for as long as you want and as many times as you want. So that is a uh, six week mobility course starting the 22nd of February. Um, the It's 125 quid lifetime access to all that content if you are a virtual classroom member there's a special code for you I can't see it on the podcast but that makes it just 99 quid for you and if you're a vip member you will have an email about the discount code for that to get at you for just 75 quid if you're a vip member so get signed up before it's too late well i know jack and i think i might have said this recently about the uh, the, the other course we ran live the body weight basics course was the most important thing that you're going to have or need around mobility is consistency yeah. and accountability. Those two things going together are going to make the biggest difference. So this is a great opportunity to do that. So go and check it out and get some more information on that. And before we dive in, I can feel I am brimming with oh. excitement for this one, Jacko. Why? Why is that? Well, because I feel like I can be opinionated today. You know, ah, if I, I don't swear, but if I do swear, I listen to other podcasts and people, they get they, when they get emotional, they swear and it, it almost gets their point across more effectively but i'm not going to do that i'm going to articulate myself i'm assuming the technician in charge of the soundboard if you do were to swear they would they would be able to edit in a beep i'll ask the producer (laughs) Um, i'm just looking at him now he says no it says it says no he he likes to keep the post edit as simple as possible (laughs) don't you producer yeah should we get on yeah sit back and enjoy us talking about Mobility, you, your mobility, flexibility, range of motion, <laughs> control articular rotations on the strength and play, movement, strength and play podcast. I even forgot what we were talking about, movement, strength and play podcast. I've made about a butcher of that. Let's get into it. Roll that jingle. Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the movement, strength and play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So, Timbo, let me set the scene. I'm sat down. Email pops up. Question from Wesley Hymans, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, saying, starting with, I've been listening to the podcast nonstop and learning a lot. I was like, Wesley, take you're in. <laughs> what, what, what do you need? Um, algorithm 101. He's into the well algorithm. And basically, I won't read it out word for word, mainly because I'm just not very good at reading. Um, but essentially, he was impressed with my um, with my bendiness. 
uh, and the ability to touch my toes. I was like, <laughs> come on, Sunshine, I can do more than that now. But anyway, I know what you mean. When you can't touch your toes and you see someone touch their toes, it's impressive. Um, <laughs> and um, he, uh, he was asking, like, where do you get started and what do you do to gain? But then interestingly, and I think most importantly for people, how did you keep that range of motion or how do you keep that range of motion flexibility bendiness da, 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 da. Uh, in this case he's talking about touching toes in the hamstring it's one of his uh, goals that he's got for himself to improve the quality of the way that he moves at the moment um so i said to him look i don't want to answer this on email it'd be far more exciting and far more um, valuable to more than just us two is to let's get timbo involved in this conversation let's answer it on the podcast and um before i my personal views on answering this question have changed dramatically probably over the last let's say five years but then even more so over the last 18 months um by uh i'm interested to get the opinionated version of uh of the of, of tim stevenson oh well thank you oh wonderful introduction um <laughs> Right. Well, this question, right? Yeah. This Basically, we're back to being. I'm back to being question master. There you go. There's the question. Well, no, but this question was given to you, and you've you've deferred to me. And I think you've probably got more. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. Yeah. Do you watch? Um, my... Do you watch? Um, Would I lie to you? No. Oh, you need to. Anyway, Rob Brydon's the Rob Brydon's the host, and oh. so when he's host, he doesn't have to do do. But every now and again, he, like he asks the questions. Yeah, but every now and again, mm. he chucks a little bit of bounce in there because he's got plenty. Um, right, I don't know where to start on this one. I'm going to just I'm going to start. I'm going to try and keep it brief because I think you've probably got more value to add on this one than I have. Um, the first thing is uh, let's just talk about the global subject of, of, of the, what we're talking about, mobility, flexibility. Yes. And then like, honing the Mohammed. This is a little bit of a bugbear of mine because I think it's got overcomplicated. And as more people... Like, I'm a bit of, I've been in this industry for a while, right? When I first started, there wasn't a lot of people talking about about this speci- this subject in as much detail and depth as we are now. Yeah. So lots of people have come in to solve the problem of lots of people not being able to move very well. And that was originally addressed probably largely in the Pilates yoga sort of space, which was kind of like the first bit where movement and improving your ability to move started with a real, that was the purpose, should we say? Yeah. Whereas like if, if mobility, so when I did my um, strength and conditioning qualifications, the, the three range of motion flexibility options that were presented to me were static stretching, active yeah. stretching, which include proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, just a neural kind of way of, of getting some additional range of motion, a different technique, and dynamic flexibility. We've now kind of got a little bit twitchy about the term flexibility, and we now call it mobility, which would typically where people would normally sort of differentiate it by, by saying that mobility is range of movement, movement through muscle strength with control, as I understand it, whereas flexibility often got labeled a little bit like static stretching. Mm. Um, for me, it's the same thing. Like what we're effectively talking about is being able to move a joint through a complete or optimal range of motion. So sitting on the floor, stretching your hamstrings, like that, if we define that as flexibility and that doesn't translate into a functional pattern that's of any real use, then it's not particularly useful. Mm. So this idea of moving, I think has got a little bit, as we've gone from like the micro of you've got to static stretch your hamstrings to moving in different ways, which we now label mobility to try and separate and differentiate it in a way. And this, we've got now Pilates, yoga, mobility, flexibility for FRC. We've got all these kind of different schools, but essentially, this is my last point, Jackie, before I pass over, mm. it's all the same stuff. Like it is just movement. And there are certain ways which physiotherapists and different practitioners will use to like different techniques. So we might have this proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation where we're starting mm-hmm. to use kind of agonist antagonist contraction to get a neural response range of motion. We might have some controlled articular rotations. We might have da 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 like put all this sorts of end range isometrics. It's all good stuff, but if and I'm, I'm in danger of simplifying it and, and this might aggravate a few people, but if we just move more through more patterns, like we don't need anything fancy than that. Like it is literally just movement. And I understand if you are in a place where you don't move well, getting to a place where you can move well, having some 
different like tools might add a little bit of uh, icing on the cake, shall we say? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure for most people, if we just did a little bit more moving into the kind of patterns that we want to move into and to negate all the years that we didn't move into those patterns when we should have been, then that's going to take massive steps forward. And, and, and kind of people might be going, oh, Tim, you massively oversimplified it. If you do nothing else, that's the priority. Like, you know, we talk about put the big mm. rocks in first, like recovery. Do the, like, what's, your big, what's your best recovery strategy? Sleep. What's your best strategy for moving more? Move more. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then when you go, right, okay, and now you're moving more in more different ways and different patterns through the available range of motion that you have, how do we then go and potentially go and optimize that? Well, okay, yeah. we might be using these certain techniques and that's going to help us to, uh, to kind of optimize it. But unless we are putting more complete movement patterns in and being intentional about moving in more ways, the rest of it is kind of like, it's not going to get the biggest bang for your book. Do you know, does that, yeah. Have I, have yeah, I taken no, myself no. well? No, definitely. Because I think that there's, there's two things I want to like pick up on and also I want to go like wide on it because actually going wider on it and, and not getting too go down into the nitty gritty which we can give you an example we'll we'll you know for wesley we'll give we'll give the we'll finish with the example of like okay hamstrings what what what's going on there but staying wide with it that the um ultimately whether you talk you gave the example of like flexibility and mobility and then some people well, some people might sort of um get the knickers in a twist a little bit about like oh but that like flexibility is passive and and um mobility means like active well but i could like do a i could do a, a passive stretch and say that i'm mobilizing my calf or hamstring or whatever and say that's a, i'm doing i'm doing a passive mobilization like they're just words and like you say that they ultimately were talking about being able to control the body and move through move through range and a exam, good example of that would be like is a pancake a passive or active range of motion exercise no it, it it's totally right and what um there's there's two elements I want to pick up on um, um they're all like based around like stay in initially let's stay wide we'll, we'll finish we'll come back round and, and finish for Wesley answer his specific question of like the, a little bit of nitty gritty for the hamstring but but starting to just appreciate and understand just from a wider perspective what what is it that we're talking about and whether some of these things are just words like flexibility or mobility passive active they're words and they mean certain things but. I could do, I could say I'm doing um, passive mobility drill or I could be doing active flexibility and then then those two things start to like merge into, oh, actually, that are they? So uh, I want to argue less about for people about whether, um, which words you like to use to describe things you're doing, but just to understand on a wider scale what's actually going on because that's been the biggest thing that's helped me understand what my body then needs to I then need to do for my body and and to to frame this i currently am the most bendy flexible or mobile or whatever it is that you want to describe it i've ever been i'm currently the oldest i've ever been as well timbo which sometimes for people being older is not is not uh not helpful for being flexible um but i do the i do the least amount of mobility flexibility training than i've ever done and it's more or less woven into like just just what i do so um and and yeah i'm by no means i still can't do like a lovely pancake or anything so i've still got a long way to go but as wesley says i can touch me terms and a little bit more um but so a couple of things that are one major thing a couple of things that you were saying and one major thing that's changed for me in my understanding of it and then application of what i'm doing is the neurology side of it um which we first got introduced when we went to crikey long in the good old days before uh, the pandemic um when we went to the um the national circus and the james, idea I his name from the other week i forgot it last week the, the strength and conditioning coach james can't remember yeah. his second name um and i know his second name now it's coming up it's muck something it's like a scottish muck, isn't he? um anyway go on uh muck braveheart and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of good Scottish things, uh, to all my uh, Scottish brothers and sisters out there, um, we've had haggis last two days uh, in preparation for Burns Night and got some whiskey out. Um, anyway, um, the neurology side of things, the brain, um, essentially, like, the brain deciding, like, 
is this position safe for me? Is this position nice for me? And he's going to govern and control what you're doing. So rather than thinking about, oh, the drill that I just saw that guy doing on Instagram looks like a good one. Maybe that's the maybe that's the magic bullet that my hamstring needs to get it to release. And the reality of it is like that might help, but it also might not, depending on what else is going on and how your brain is deciding whether a movement is safe or not is going to be governed by um, a few very simple things. One, is it painful when you go there? Because it's not going to like pain if it's painful when you go there. Two, are you strong enough in there or are you weak in there? Because if you're weak in there and you're not strong enough for that position, then the brain will go, well, I ain't going to let you go there because you're going to get me injured there. And if it's painful, it ain't going to want you to go there because it's just not nice being in there. Um, and then like, how are your, how are you governing your whole nervous system when you're in there? So um, Brian McKenzie from Shift Adapt is sort of like uh, big on this. I was talking to a physio um, literally last week um, about this idea of, um, we can use things. So if I go into a position, or I'm trying to do a mobilization or a stretch or whatever, how I'm breathing during that position will send some signals to my nervous system about whether is this like a stressful event or can I relax into this event? Um, just because like how we are inhales and our exhales can influence our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So there are some things that are going to govern what you're doing that will basically give you a chance for the brain to go, okay, this actually, this is a position I'll let you be in and, and have. And then you start to go, the, what you were saying around um, moving in lots of different ways in lots of different positions. The more shapes and positions and things you go into, the more you're teaching your brain that like, this is okay to go over here. But also the flip side of it, you'll find you'll go, oh, when I go over there, it feels a bit weird compared to when I go on this side. And you might go to a position and feel like, oh, Actually, that doesn't feel very good. And then you'll start to understand where are the corners and where are some of your restrictions going in. And I think that the real key then starts to come in when you, if you're going to try to move like outside of your current comfort zone, you've got to find that we've got to find a way that allows my brain to believe that that is a safe place to go to. And if it's that I'm weak in that position, I've got to find out how to strengthen it. Um, if it's that I'm like fully, if there's just like a block in there or it's painful, we need to then start to understand like what's causing that. So is it that something is weak? Is it that something's under as Have I got a disruption to some of the length tension relationships that's surrounding, um, surrounding that joint? And if I can then find what the issue is, and then most likely either by strengthening strength of the area that was weak or by um, uh, partly probably strengthening, but also maybe loosening off some of the tissues to try to, balance off those length tension relationships and restore a little bit of normality and balance around those joints it's like oh i go into that and it feels great straight after you know when we i when we've done anything neurology based you know with with z health we've had dr cobb come on here before and we've done some of their foundational courses the 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 really interesting thing with the brain is when it if you do something that it likes the reaction you get from it is pretty much instant and I had this like literally um, was it yesterday or the day before did something on like my right um, piriformis and then went into a squat and it was like, wow, I can go way further than I would have normally done. And it was like, because that was the right thing I needed right then. Um, and my hamstring release. But anyway, but um, that's that. And that, just the one thing I don't want to do is to like caveat or to just give people the, cause that almost gives us the idea that like, Ooh, there's there is a magic bullet and we've said before like there are no magic bullets um but there is a process of if you understand about trying to how the brain is governing what you're going to do and then find out what the issue is in terms of strength and length tension relationships and, and anything else that goes into that like movement of whatever particular joint it is then you're then you're on to a then you're on to a good thing and i think that when you find this is what we talk about in the six week course with with georgie we go we, we showcase a whole load of stuff Bef before we do anything any exercise or anything we always testing and retesting so that if we show you like five things for your hamstring you've tested and retested before every one so you know the two or the one that work best for you and you just do that one that works best for you not any of the other ones um and then you start to your, your warm-ups and your your routines start to become or you don't have to do a separate mobility training because you go well i've got 
one thing from a hamstring that I know really works for me. I've got this other thing from a shoulder and this other thing from a spine. So I've got three things that I need to do. And I always do them in my warm up. And it's like, when I do those, my body feels great. Um, like I've got a very simple uh, diaphragm like breathing reset that we do in the at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of the course and it's one that Dana Santos teaches as well and they teach it at Z-Hell Performance just because the diaphragm plays a role in hip flexors and stabilizing spine etc so it can influence other things and when I do that I do th- do I do three reps and it takes like 20 seconds at the beginning of any session my body feels better afterwards it's like one of my three things that I do and it's like it's it, it's nothing it takes no time at all um and when you start to be able to be pinpoint with that you know you won't have 10 different exercises that you always have to try to do to stay loose and mobile um so i've just gone for a bit of over over there but essentially make the brain happy find out what the issue is and it's most likely something somewhere is weak and that's why the brain's not happy what do you think Good. of that i like it um i think the one thing you said about that was just a really good point around there's no magic bullet there is it's principles <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. understand the principles that's the magic bullet because then you can use whatever methods you want there's that ralph Waldo emerson quote which i use quite all the time because we are we are living in a world or an age of methods there are a million methods but if you understand the principles of what you're trying to do then you can choose your own methods to suit your own situation so understanding that jack is dead right because if you go back and look at some of the static stretching research, and I haven't done this for a couple of years, but um, cause it's not interesting, but um, if you want to go and read some of it, we actually don't know what we're stretching. So if you go and look at a six week passive hamstring stretching um, intervention, the results of that will probably say static stretching is ineffective for lengthening the hamstrings over six weeks. So if you, if you look at the mechanisms, is it, is it capture it, it change the motion that we do see? People will argue, is it capsular? Is it fascial? Is it muscular? Is it neural? Is it da 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 da? It could be all these different things which are contributing to a change in length of range of motion. What the, the crux of that, and this is where research falls apart, is that you go, well, if it's a hamstring lengthening exercise that didn't work, or a hamstring lengthening in, uh, intervention which didn't work because we did static stretching, well, what most of the time, because we have to control variables in research, people will stretch the hamstring, gone up, change of motion. Oh, that looks, that's pretty good. That improves. Off you go. See you next week. Come back. Oh, it's the same. Well, why? Because we've done nothing else. I mean, yeah. your, your brain is now walked out, gone, crikey, I feel a bit wobbly in here because I don't have this tension. So we often talk about the continuum of stability or mobility, stability, and strength. Well, mobility requires stability and strength to get mobile. So then they're, they're not three independent things. So mm. if we want to get range of motion, yes, we need to move different ways and there's different ways that we can do it. But we have to be stable in those ranges of motion that we're trying to achieve. Otherwise, the brain will th- sense threats and it will wind that mobility back. Yeah. And we need to be strong in that range of motion so the brain, again, has confidence to move in and out of these shapes. And one thing that I think before we go too far down that rabbit hole, because it's probably a conversation for another time, but if, you, if your training practices are based, based around the same movement patterns consistently... Uh, I'm going to use an example. Calisthenics can be an example. CrossFit can be an example. Olympic weightlifting is a part of CrossFit, but whatever it might be, most sports, even rugby and hockey and like team sports, will have consistent movement patterns. If we don't spend time moving outside of those movement patterns and finding the areas where we are restricted and can't move, that will have a knock on effect or detrimental effect on the system's ability to move. So, if a great example might be. Someone's lacking hip internal range of motion, right? Hips can often get jacked up. You can probably do your thing not knowing that you've only got five degrees of hip internal rotation. When ideally, we probably want you to have more like 45 degrees. But by, if you start to do mobility work in the way that Jacko and Georgie present it, then you'll go through some movements. You're like, you know what? That's flipping horrible. Like, I, cannot, I cannot sit in a squat and get my knee to the ground, which is, which is a real simple kind of active internal rotation movement. Well, that exposes a weak link in your kinetic chain. That's a problem because it will affect the, the mechanics of how you move. And it is potentially a source of, of injury. Uh, let's say it could be the cause of uh, some faulty movement patterns or suboptimal movement patterns, which could then result in injury. It might not be the adductors or anything. It could be something different, yeah. but it could be the ankle. But because you don't move well through that pattern, humans move best when we have access to more movement options so if you are if you are typically finding yourself in sagittal plane movements which a lot of sports play in and a lot of like functional fitness movements happening now 
you need to start thinking about other patterns, rotation and and side to side lateral type movements, moving through transverse and frontal planes, getting into awkward positions. That is like there's absolute gold in there, and it's the biggest thing that people forget to do. And when when they and my last point, Jacko, before I pass it over for you to wrap yeah. it up. People complain about not being able to move well, like, oh, I'm not, I'm not very flexible. Well, how much time do you dedicate to it, to actually sort of making changes? You, you can maintain your mobility now because, to be fair, you went through quite a de- de- dedicated block of really working on it. So you yeah. did that work, and now it's easy to maintain it. Had you not done that work, you would still not be able to touch toes. Hmm. Right, you've got you've got to, you've got to kind of if you want to go and get strong, you've got to go and do a strength block. Yeah, and then once you once once you are strong, or once you've got size, typically it's easier to maintain it because you've done that work. Yeah, what's happening at the moment is people have adopted poor quality movement patterns because they've not moved them mo- enough, yeah. and what they're doing is maintaining really poor movement patterns because they're not changing them, they're not being intentional about them. So, I think that's <coughs> just a. Uh, a little bit of an encouragement to if, if this all sounds quite mystical it's really like the simplicity of it is it's not no. but we want to talk principles and not methods yeah no and I, I you know i want to that my my sort of final thing on this and 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 takeaways from it is to keep it simple and on that notion of keep it you know you talked about um and, and wesley's question you know the interesting part of wesley's question at the beginning of this podcast was like how do you keep it because as you said, like on a hamstring, if you just try to touch your toes for 30 seconds or two minutes every day, you'll notice that when you sit in a position and try to relax into it, like whatever it is, that's whether fascia, muscle, the, whatever the thing is that's changing, you will feel a change in the range of motion. That is like fine. And, you know, you gave an example of like they might do something with someone's hamstring and it will improve during that test. And then they send them home and then they come back the next day. And they they're back to square one again. And that that how do I how do we keep it? Um, and we talked about well, you said like you know bodies feels oh a bit bendy. Like how do I how, how do I how do I stabilize how do I stabilize this? This doesn't feel right. I've not I've not I've not earned the right to be here. So um, I'll just tighten tighten things back up to where we were before. And I'm I'm used to where we were before. So let's just go back to that. I've got that I've got that programmed in the system. Let's go back to that. If you want to go to if you want to have like a new blueprint and a new program you got to do something to show the brain that like, why do you want to be there and let it be strong there? So give it a reason to go there, one, intention, and then two, we need to have some strength there. And the strength part of it, like just like any strength, work, progressive overload. So don't go in too hard to start because if you go in with something too heavy, the brain's going to like push back against that, don't like that. So, and the, and the, the loads, because we're talking about in, trying to increase a range of motion, we're going to need to be ensure that we go to the end of that range. And when you go to the end of that range, you, your muscles are most lengthened. They can't contract so well. So you don't need a lot of load. Like it might not actually be an, an additional load of like a weight. It might just be like that your arm's fully out there and reaching and, that, and the weight of your arm is enough. So, but what that's going to give you is you build some strength in that new position. You're starting to tell the brain, this is a position we're going to go to. Give it a reason to do that. I'm doing it for this thing. Duh, duh, duh. And then you're more likely to go away from that session, the brain be happier with that position and range that you've gone to so that when you come back next time, rather than starting all again, you're starting from a better place. And then gradually, 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 that becomes easier to do. And, and that's probably, I say this at workshops when we've, we've got some workshops coming up, in fact, in, in, in February and March. So check those out, one in Staffordshire and one in, um, in London. Check them out on the website. But say this at workshops, like when we're doing like the movement preparation part of the warm ups, and everyone we do, you know, because we'll use, we might do some uh, self self massage or self myofascial release things, and people notice, and then we do, we do a retest, and it's like that's better, and then we do some mobilizations and the retest, and it's that better, and it's like great. But if you come back in six months' time, every time you're coming back, you're at the same starting point, and you have to do restart all over again. You you create some nice range, but you're not solidifying it and keeping it as Wesley as not keeping it then you're missing a strength link in there and when you start to think about it how do I how do I how do I ensure that I've got that strength link well if your training involves you going back to keeping it simple and what you said Tim around just moving in lots of different ways if your training session itself not your warm-up not your mobility sessions if your training sessions themselves incorporate moving in those positions and requiring you to be strong in those positions that you're trying to work on, 
then it's just it comes part of your training and that's that's where i think that that the gold is um for people to and and that allows you to like it's not extra it's it's part of your training it's part of how you move yeah agreed i think that the challenge for people in that is that you've got to start thinking about moving different ways so if your go-to has normally been sort of like heavy back squats for example if you're talking lower body well like when did you last do some like goblet squat cossack lateral lunge type work like with with a, with a 10 kilo weight because that will help you get in and out of those lateral yeah. range that'll do some work for your adductors if your adductors are tight um but we get we have these i think people become you know fitness we can talk about growth mindset and we, we, we probably consider most of us to be quite growth mindset orientated but people can be extremely fixed around exercise selection because we we, <laughs> we, we start to adopt this um, belief that we've got to move in a certain way or do a certain things to maintain strength size and all that sort of stuff but the, the biggest thing is like we, we're missing the, the one thing or one of the things i say strength is important when you get older but as your life changes it's about movement plain and simple it is about movement and you if you continue to do it if you're not moving well enough now and you're not happy with your range of motion or mobility i can guarantee that's going to get worse as you get older unless you do something about it promise yeah. you that i put my mortgage on that if you do nothing different to what you're doing now you'll move worse than you do in in next 20 years time yeah so there's an opportunity to do something different about it. Don't get complicated in what type of stretching you're gonna do. Start by just moving more, training in different ways. Think about getting stable and strong through those ranges of motion and do it consistently. I can't stress that enough. Like you have got to do it regularly and that's where the goal, the goal is. Yep, certainly is. Thank you, Tim, I enjoyed that one. That was good. I hope it wasn't too offensive. <laughs> no, it was a bit, <laughs> I don't didn't think swear. it was in any way offensive. You didn't swear. You know, well, it's just... me opinionated. I think sometimes people are expecting more from me, but I don't like to like. I don't get aggressive about it. I want to swear, and I've got a real thing at the moment where I'm seeing stuff on social, which is just driving me up the wall because people like properly, you know, in this attention economy that we live in, people are properly cherry picking stuff, and like, but they, they say they, they say something to make them sound so well clever, like taking one line out of a research paper, and then actually sort of like confusing people to the point where you go you know what i don't think i know anything this person <laughs> knows way more than i do and then you go actually i've started now when people do that to me on social i go and read the research paper so i can actually and i go okay yeah just you pick one line out and that's not actually what it said but you are now you've chosen the juiciest moment from that that whole 10 page article to get people to to kind of engage but it doesn't make us feel better about ourselves because now we don't know anything so in mobility it's really like complicated move more i got a tip for you timbo you unfollow those bad boys. You don't need them do. in your life. I do. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. I unfollow the people that annoy me these days, which is probably creating my echo chamber. But anyway, let's not go down that <laughs> hole. Uh, I enjoyed that. That was good. I hope there's some good things in there for people. Send us some questions if you've got any. Um, and if you also think Jacko's transformational mobility journey has been inspirational, that, well, maybe he could put together a YouTube video and get us about 10 million hips because everyone loves a good transformation. Have you got, have you got an archive of videos? I have a, you know, funny enough, I didn't take any videos of myself when I couldn't move very well. Yeah. We should have had done. Well, to be fair, we've probably actually, we, I have got, this is, this is, <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I was, you know, on your iPhone every now and again, anyone, anyone that's, um, bother to stay to the end of the podcast it's one of these times where you're in for a little bit of a treat um uh i don't know if i dare actually get them out for the uh that could go on youtube couldn't they i don't know i'll mention i'll i'll, I'll say my lads but there's one there's a photo that i'm going to reference that tim will tim will remember but then there's some videos that um so as, you know on your phone every now and again your iphone goes oh you know back in 2016 <laughs> yeah. here's a picture of you in your pants doing this and you're like Oh, that's interesting. And then I flicked over and there was a picture of Tim and his pants doing something. Yeah, there's a terrible photo that's never been uh, never <laughs> seen a, the light of day, fortunately. Eh? There's but a couple the that I've got. So, but then it made them, but there was reminded me of, I did used to use my GoPro in the gym sometimes when we were first starting. And I have got a load of really, really crap videos of us being really crap at calisthenics. Um, yeah, there is a but the transformation is uh, still relatively crap combined. now, so it's not that different. Yeah, I know. Was, <laughs> we, we talk a good game now, but we're still actually a bit crap. Um, right, we'll finish on that mild swear word as the end of our end of our conversation today. So um, you can go to iTunes, uh, your favourite listening listening platform. And you can your iTunes, your Spotify, yeah, your iTunes, your SoundCloud. People need people. Need to, yeah, that's just becoming a thing now. Um, 
Uh, it's not, I won't refresh that. Um, yeah, so go and give us a five-star review because we like five stars and we think we deserve it, if we're being honest. Um, that's not brilliant. <laughs> and um, send us some questions. If you want your question answered in a similar format to how we've done today, at length and with opinion. <laughs> if you want them um, more specific, <laughs> then I just say, can you just please reply on email? <laughs> yeah. If you want to even shorten the email Instagram, <laughs> you're gonna get you know that's like because the character limit and all that sort of stuff um but we like answering questions because they uh they, they give us good topic for conversation and, and probably beneficial to other people so do all those things and then come back and listen next week my email is david at scorecardstates.com tim is tim at scorecardstates.com uh, we look forward to hearing from you other than that timbo keep exploring your physical potential through movement strength and play just going to last note before we go email response rates may vary <laughs> class dismissed <laughs>